Cargoshell, if I understood your motion correctly, that you recommend voting on all these items at once. There's money involved here, and I think they should be taken individually. Like right. I had 141, you got Did represents you about three grand, and where it's coming from, and so on and so okay. forth. And I feel you should. Other than our breakdown, it's here. Yes. Fine. So would you care to make the motion for item 141? Yes. I so move. You wouldn't care to read it. Oh, you would like me to read it? Okay, okay I'll read it. Okay, this is for the printing of the Know Your Town booklet. Expenses uh, for a total of three thousand dollars expenditure, one thousand dollars from the administration printing and advertising account in lieu of the next newsletter, seven hundred fifty dollars from the boards and commissions printing and advertising account, and the remaining one thousand two hundred fifty dollars from the town council contingency fund. This would provide about seven hundred copies. Thank you. Will I, you will, have a second? I will amend my second to only item 141. Thank you. Yes, Count Amro. I thought that that money would uh, <coughs> allow us to send copies to everybody in town, plus have 700 that kind of copies. Yes, ma'am. So Is that seven, correct? 700 extra copies over yeah. those that would be sent out. So how many all together? Then? I think that there are some 3,500 or... 4,500 copies about that will be printed. 4,500 copies? I think it's great that they will be mailed out to everybody. It's a nice book. Mr. Chairman? Council Matheson. How many, uh, Michael, I'm addressing this to you, how many households do we have in Cape Elizabeth, approximately? Around 3,500 individual households. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? You've heard the motion. All in favor? Raise your hand. Those opposed? The vote. Six to nothing. Oh. Item 142, to consider recommendation of the Main Street 90 Committee to endorse an elderly call caring program, take any necessary action. Anyone care to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we endorse the elderly call caring program and utilize $50 uh, as an expenditure from the administration office supply account. I'll second. Been moved and second. Anyone get a comment? The only comment I'd like to make is mentioned in the text of the letter that $50 might not be enough, and if it isn't, I hope that they will come back and get more. I, that just seems like such an utter pittance that um, I just don't want this in any way to retire in case more money is needed than coming forward. I'd, I'd rather appropriate 100 and if they don't use it, I'll find. But I don't want this to in any way impair this very fine idea to go forward, so I'll vote for the 50 with that in, in the back of my mind. Thank you. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Those opposed? To vote. <coughs> Six to nothing. Item 143, to consider the recommendation of Main Street 90 Committee to remove scrub growth along Route 77 in the town center and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman, um, I move that uh, we adopt this item to remove uh, scrub brush next to the town hall and that any cost uh, of that <coughs> project would be absorbed within the public works budget. Second. We moved and seconded. Anyone got a comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Oh, those opposed? Item 145, excuse me, 144. Yes. To consider the recommendation of Main Street 90 Committee to remove the pavement within the traffic island at the town center and to have grass and pinings instead and take any necessary action. Do I hear a motion for recommendation? Mr. Chairman, I move that we appropriate a a $200 to be taken from the Parks Improvements account to be utilized in removing the tar from the traffic islands. Second. Do we hear a second? Anybody got a comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? To vote. Now we can take 145. 
to consider a recommendation from Main Street 90 Committee to purchase town entrance signs and take any necessary action. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Latore. I would move that we recommend uh, that we take $250 from the park improvement account and $1,750 from the town council contingency for these three entrance signs. I would like to add a fourth, welcome to Ocean View Road, but I don't imagine that would <laughs> probably be passed by the council, so <laughs> we'll stick with the three that we have. Second. Can't even get an entrance sign up on the party section of town, Pickett Street. We figured you'd spend enough money over there, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> nice. What was that, sir? Here, here. Nothing. I didn't quite hear it. I said, we figured you'd, you'd spend enough money over there already. You probably spent too much, but it's a nice wide street and plenty of room to have a sign up. It wouldn't interfere with any construction. You had the motion that we take 250 for park improvements and 1700 from the town council contingency. Can't be too much left there. Councilor Cremer. Mr. Chairman, I just had uh, two questions, and we debated these questions a little bit at our uh, joint meeting. Uh, one was uh, these signs and the ability of the signs to be, so to speak, uh, graffiti-proof, as well as the signs to be uh, removal-proof. Um, I don't want to suggest anything to anyone, but we, we did have some concerns about this expenditure and how safe these uh, signs were going to be. Did, was there any further discussion on that? Yes, there has been. Um, we had talked about how to make them as vandal-proof as possible, and the design incorporates a, a mechanism to make it hard to detach the sign from, it, from the posts that the town will be putting in, um, and that will be done. We've also debated uh, how best to keep the wooden portions of the signs as vandal-proof as possible uh, from cutting, and there are some dangers involved in doing that, and, and uh, we'll leave that to the town administration on, on what to do for preventing certain vandalism for the wooden posts that will be holding up the signs. To the issue of uh, graffiti-proof, no surface is graffiti-resistant or uh, totally proof, um, and yet, uh, I, the Main Street 90s committee's feeling is that the signs will be nice and there'll be a representation of pride in the community. And that when you have that pride being expressed, very seldom do you find the graffiti, unless you have a real animosity issue uh, or uh, that has developed. So just the nature of the signage, the professionalism of the signage will discourage uh, wanton uh, type of uh, maliciousness, if you will. Uh, but I don't know that we'll ever make it totally vandal proof. We've also not made it such an attractive sign that they'll show up in every house in Cape Elizabeth uh, at some point uh, in the future. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Just on that issue, I've spoken to Kurt Jodry, who uh, will be the sign maker if this is approved. And we are looking at metal posted signs instead of the wooden. So the chainsaw could not make quick use of it. And actually, this would fund four signs, three of which uh, would be placed. That's right, yes. Chainsaw would do about cut and touch. Uh, everybody understand the motion? If so, all in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, it's a vote. Six to nothing. Item 146. To consider a recommendation from the Main Street 90 Committee, a landscape porch of the side of the town hall and take the necessary action. I take it you've got a spot out here that's going to be plowed up and look pretty as we enter, enter the hall. Yes, sir. Does anybody care to make a motion? I do. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we take uh, $550 from Parks and Improvement for a landscaping outside town hall. I'll second. Been moved and seconded. Anybody else got a comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, it's a vote, six to nine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, there's just one thing that uh, I didn't see in your recommendation. You haven't got Joni Benoit out of the bushes yet. She's still trying to jog out of the bushes. I don't know how to respond, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> I just a thought for your committee, that's all. 
Item 147, to consider a proposed revised easement for the Cape Elizabeth the Land Trust and the Francis Jordan property adjacent to a great pond taking necessary action. I believe you all got a, a memo from conservation, I mean the land trust people and their, our attorney and some recommendation that makes uh, the town, you might say, a third party in this as far as the uh, purchase goes. And Mr. we Chairman, have a couple. I, I have a request from a counselor who's not present that I was asked earlier to make the request at this time, so I would do so. In deference to my esteemed colleague, uh, Councillor uh, McLaughlin has asked that this be deferred to a later time at the agenda because she wishes, she feels very strongly about this issue and wishes to be present at the vote. Now, my indication was from talking to Janet that she would be present at some time tonight. I don't know whether she also communicated that to Michael, but she did tell me that she was going to be here. I, she told me that she'd be here by 8.30. I don't know what is happening, but I just wish to be, again, because she personally asked me to do this, I would like to at this point ask that this be moved to the last item on the agenda. I so moved. Been moved? Do I hear a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Anybody else got a comment? We have some people here, what have you, but it's up to you. Nobody has a comment? All, all in favor of moving this item at the end of the agenda, item one. 47 to the end of the agenda. Please indicate by raising your hand. Those opposed? Thank you. It's all set. You don't mind waiting a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Item 148 to consider a proposed memorandum of understanding with the main Department of Transportation for the improvements of Route 77 and take any <coughs> necessary action. I believe you all received a memo and it spells out what <coughs> the agreement or uh, memo that we have with the state and uh, I feel oh. it's fair and I think it should be my opinion moved forward. I know we haven't got all we wanted but we did accomplish something along the way. And I believe the manager might want to add a few comments to it. This, this uh, memorandum of understanding with the main Department of Transportation would, ac would accomplish two uh, projects that have been desired by the community for some period. Uh, the first is the, the uh, extensive repaving of Route 77 from its first intersection just down here at the corner with Fowler Road uh, to Wentworth Road, which is just beyond the Cape Elizabeth Church of the Nazarene. Mm -hmm. In addition, uh, MDOT would pave uh, the shoulders uh, along Route 77 from the Spurwing Church to the Spurwing Bridge, thus completing uh, the shoulder improvement program that was begun in the early, early 1980s uh, all along uh, Route 77, uh, primarily at that point at the behest of uh, Elsa West DeMillo and uh, uh, hundreds of signatures obtained from school children and parents and, and others that, that influenced MDOT. Uh, in the process. Uh, this, particularly uh, with the memor memorandum of understanding is supposed to state before you this evening, is that the town will fund uh, either 20% uh, of the project or our share of 25620 whichever is less. The, the 25620 is not specifically mentioned uh, in the agreement, but that is, is the amount. Uh, if you do approve this tonight, it would be my intent to uh, send this uh, back to MDOT with an indication confirming the fact that uh, this is conditioned upon uh, the town contribution not to exceed the 25620 Councilor Torrey. Yes, just once again, Michael, to clarify for me and others out in the audience about the business of paying 20% versus 12.5%, as I've been continuing to digest this. The definition according to the, of the 12.5%, which is federal aid, to primary projects in urban areas require lesser cost sharing of 12 and a half due to their greater regional statewide significance as arterial routes. Why don't we qualify for that again? We, we are in essence are qualifying for that and our contribution level 
uh, at 25,620 is the lesser of those two percentages, other than 20. Okay. Anybody else? The commissioner used a, a lot of roundabout language to get to that point. I just, I just wanted to make sure that that was the definite, because we clearly meet that definition by one to get the lower rate for us to contribute. Anybody else? Anybody I, I would just comment uh, to let the citizens know that it really is uh, only due to the persistent efforts uh, of our council chairman that the final sum that the town of Cape Elizabeth uh, will end up paying is probably 50% uh, less than it would have been, save the uh, several series of letters that went back and forth from uh, Chairman Jordan to the uh, Commissioner of Transportation. I think uh, we all owe him a, a debt of gratitude for his efforts. Thank you. Anyone care to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we authorize the manager to enter into a uh, uh, agreement, a uh, memorandum of understanding with the Department of Transportation regarding Second. Any other comment? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Six to nothing. So you take care of that before you take it on. <laughs> Item one forty nine <clears throat> to consider acknowledging the receipt of the Comcheaven Street. Free survey and take any necessary action. The people received a nice uh, tree survey of the town and a plan which could be implemented, I would say, in phases. And I think you've done an outstanding job, in my opinion, in putting this together. And I think it'll be very helpful in the future. Does anyone else have any comment about it? one way or the other? I thought it was very I enjoyed it. No, the tree lady. Well, the tree lady. <laughs> there were several uh, recommendations included in this uh, report, and I hope that we'll see some of them in the second issue. Okay. The proposed budget shows, I would think, an $8,000 increase for trees. Probably the entire budget is the highest percentage increase. Yes, Councilor Creamer. Mr. Chairman, it seems like we say this uh, so often, but uh, this particular document is just so impressive uh, with respect to the, uh, the work that has gone into it. I I'm assuming our tree warden is responsible for this document. Mr. Churchill, is it? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, just a debt of gratitude. I mean, uh, in reading through this document, I mean, not only was it helpful from the point of view of the recommendations that uh, he has made uh, as our uh, town official, but it really uh, is an education uh, on the whole issue of uh, trees and horticulture. And I, I wonder if this document ought not in some way be bound and, and put in the library. It's just such an educational experience. It's really quite extraordinary, and uh, I thank him for his work. Anybody else? I don't know, Mr. Chairman. The, it recommends the formation of yet another commission. I didn't the, suggest a commission. The Shade Tree Commission <laughs> on page one. Now, that's that's going right. to be one of the more interesting commissions in the history of the town. It'll only be available in the Memorial Library. No uh, committees, no it commissions. Even, it even gives you a good description of how to set out a tree, which is helpful to me. Mm. Very good. So what's your wishes? Mr. Chairman, I just have one question. Go ahead. For the, the map on the back back page. I'm not really sure what it signifies. There's no key. Okay. Some, somewhere in the report, I don't remember exactly where, it indicates uh, that there are, there are a number of hazard trees in Cape Elizabeth. Oh, uh, and all those trees. little dots indicate the locations of the hazard trees. Okay. Um, I noticed, uh, <coughs> Michael, that there are a couple of obviously groves of trees in Fort Williams. Is that the oak grove that's down in front of the Girl Scout building? The yes, there are, there are two groves shown here. One is up in front of the guarded mansion extending toward Shore Road, and the other is uh, where the bandstand is. Does that mean that they're all, they all have to go? Or? No, just trimming. It doesn't. Oh. This does not indicate that the trees have to come down. Th there's another. Uh, in the, the back parking lot behind the Girl Scout building is also a 
grove of trees there that need quite a bit of trimming. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I'd Councilor like to, Torrey. I'd like to move to acknowledge receipt of the comprehensive street tree survey. I'll second. second. Been moved and seconded. Any other comment? If not, all in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Put some articles on here so we split up the vote. It's kind of dry. <clears throat> Item 150 to consider acknowledging the receipt of the proposed fiscal year 1991 municipal sewer Riverside Cemetery in Portland headlight budget. Take any necessary action. Anybody have a comment? Where are they? Where are they? You've got them. Yeah, the, the council, <laughs> if I may, Mr. Chairman, the council has received the summary of the municipal budget, the summary of the school budget, excuse me, have not, summary of the sewer budget, summary of the Riverside Cemetery budget. You have not received the Fulton Headlight budget. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten it yet, but I, I wrote out a sheet, maybe you don't have it yet, that, is, that says as much as I've tried to come up with a Fulton Headlight budget, I'm, I'm really unable to do so at this point. Uh, I tried putting one together, and there, there were just too many uncertainties. But what I what I have provided, you do have a copy of it, is, is that you you look at it during the budget process it's set, as setting it up as a separate uh, enterprise fund. Uh, the current lease uh, provisions with the Coast Guard provide that uh, all proceeds need to be reinvested into Portland Headlight or to the the facilities which complement it, parking, roads, all that sort of thing, and uh, that will be a subject. Uh, We'll be, we will be able to debate. The municipal budget itself, if, if I may, uh, provides for a tax rate increase of 7.9% and a spending increase of 7.1%. Uh, that is uh, higher than anyone would like, but, but at the same time, I think it, it, it reflects uh, a tremendous amount of restraint and a tremendous amount of cooperation among all the department heads uh, of the community. Uh, I think when you look at the individual accounts, you will notice that a number of the major departments actually have appropriations less than the current year. Uh, most of the increases are coming in the, in the areas of employee benefits, uh, insurances, uh, hydrant rental from the Portland Water District, and areas such as that. But uh, altogether, I think it's a, it's a restrained budget, but also an extremely responsible one, and uh, one that will uh, serve the citizens well uh, during fiscal year. 1991. The sewer budget was previously discussed tonight and you've provided for a sewer rate increase to provide for the needs in that area. And Riverside Cemetery uh, will show on paper a profit this coming year, but in essence, uh, the Riverside it will enable you to continue to set aside funds in the perpetual care accounts uh, for the long-term maintenance of the cemetery. Thank you. Does anybody get a comment? Anyone care to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we acknowledge receipt of the proposed fiscal year 1991 municipal sewer Riverside Cemetery in Portland headlight budgets. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any other comment? Yes. Should, you'll get your big books Friday if all the printing goes well. It's going to the printers first thing in the morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Council Masses. We did not get the Portland headlight budget. Yes. So I would I would so amend. So seconded. All I know is all the packets we get. My neighbors are wondering why the police is in my driveway so often. <laughs> Seems so. It was commented here a while ago that we weren't getting enough information. But I guess we're getting it now because I agree with you. <laughs> You ready? Yeah. All in favor of the motion? Let's raise your hand. Those opposed? It's a vote, six to nothing. Item 152, to consider participating in signing a note to establish a working capital for the Greater Portland Council of Governments and take any necessary action. I believe you all got a little memo on that, and I think the manager has a little something he'd like to add to it. And maybe Sam <coughs> Amro has a few points that she might like to make. Um, I don't 
know who's first. Who cares to be first? I'll, I'll take it on. The town of Cape Elizabeth was one of the original members of the Greater Portland Regional Planning Commission and its successor agency, the Greater Portland Council of Governments. Uh, COG is, is, in essence, not only just our regional planning agency, but also serves many different other func important functions in our region as a forum uh, for discussions, uh, for the gathering of municipal officials, and particularly in the area of, of joint services and in the purchase of uh, various uh, goods and services used by the region's uh, municipalities. Uh, over the long term, COG has, has uh, been a tremendous resource for the agency. Uh, it's, it's gone through some very challenging times with declining federal funds and, and with, with a very you know, fairly loose organization uh, as to uh, you know, its long-term support that it is totally voluntary. Uh, at this point, COG uh, has gone through some difficult times. Uh, as many of you have read in, in the newspaper, uh, they have a significant deficit that they're now dealing with as a result of uh, some, a, a number of issues, uh, including uh, some of the pass-through programs that they were doing where, where monies that they were receiving for certain programs uh, ended up going to, to fund other certain basic costs uh, that were approved. Uh, there were some revenues that they anticipated that had not come in. Uh, that there were problems with uh, some of the receivables from the state of Maine are up to 90 days uh, past due uh, from the state and a, and a number of other factors. Uh, basically, it comes down to the, to the point today uh, that uh, COG has no working capital. Uh, they are about five months behind in paying their rent. Uh, they owe a number, a number of other vendors uh, significant payments for services uh, provided over the past year. Uh, COG has looked at a number of op options as to how to get themselves out of this hole. Uh, the best bet they saw uh, after, after a thorough analysis uh, work by the Finance Committee and by the officers group of COG and after some discussion with the managers in the region was to uh, ask all of the member communities that are not town meeting forms of government uh, to agree to sign on a note uh, to benefit uh, COG. Uh, what we're in essence doing is, is what you would be doing is extending uh, the credit of the town of Cape Elizabeth uh, as a backing uh, for the note. The specific amount being requested uh, is $25,000. Uh, thus far, the towns of Gorham and Yarmouth uh, during the past week have both unanimously approved uh, extending uh, $25,000 of, of uh, credit worthiness uh, to, to the Council of Governments. Uh, this is a, a difficult time for COD. And you know, I, I can't sit here and say that the dollars that you're investing are absolutely guaranteed. Uh, but I, I can say that you know, if if this doesn't happen, uh, the outlook for COG is not good. Uh, you know, you, you you can't very well uh, continue uh, being an ongoing enterprise if uh, you you have a huge onslaught of, of back bills. Uh, COG has been working very hard, and you know, particularly Jane uh, Amro is the president of COG, uh, to tr and John Booby is the, the director, as well as the entire executive committee, to work themselves out of out of the problems that they do have. Uh, as, as the memo from uh, John Booby indicates, that already they have cut 13 members of their staff. Uh, they're reducing the amount of space that they're renting. They're seeking a new location uh, for COG that would uh, not only uh, uh, cost less would also have parking and be more accessible. Uh, they've closed the print the printing cooperative, which was a money loser, and uh, they've cut they've already cut their receivables from 66 days to 42 days. Uh, they also have a plan for recovery that that is being developed for the next uh, 12 months. Uh, I, I strongly support uh, the council uh, taking an action in support of the council government's. Uh, to ensure that uh, this important agency will be around uh, to uh, assist our region and our community in the future. Thank you. Councilman, do you have anything you'd like uh, to add to that? <coughs> Only that uh, the executive committee of COG, which consists of one representative from each of the member communities plus a representative of uh, the county commissioners and the uh, Common County Managers Association, 
did vote unanimously to um, to borrow the two hundred to borrow a total of two hundred thousand uh, dollars to use as working capital to help the organization build itself, get itself out of the hole that it's in. Uh, and that meeting uh, was probably the best attended meeting that Congress had since I've been around because I think every community was interested and wanted to be represented and wanted to vote on, on this issue. And it was unanimous. And I think it was also significant that the representative from Portland made the motion uh, to do this. So I think there's a, a lot of support out there for the organization. Uh, to be honest, the, uh, COG has never really been capitalized by the community that our members. Uh, we all pay uh, a small amount of dues. That's really a small portion of what, what the capital is that the organization needs on an annual basis. And uh, it's always been an organization that, that, that operates from day to day. Uh, and uh, when we got into a deficit position, uh, uh, that made it just about impossible to do anything besides uh, meet the payroll uh, every two weeks. So uh, I'm hoping that the council will look very good on this request and that, uh, and I also hope <laughs> that we never have to uh, uh, be in a position of having to come up with those funds. And I don't think that we will because uh, the measures that have been taken and the few measures that we may have to take uh, down the road to even come back further, uh, I think that the second committee is prepared to make those really good. Decisions. Thank you. Councilor Cogeshaw. I think it might uh, benefit the public if, if we could tell them how we benefit from buy, being a member of COG mm -hmm. by um, buying what our salt and sand, our fuel oil, um, police cars. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other services school that supplies. school supplies as a yeah. joint group? Through the joint <laughs> services, we, we purchase all of our rescue medical supplies, our police cruisers, uh, much of the equipment that the fire department uses, all of our fuel oil needs, all of our gasoline that keeps all the school buses and all the other vehicles on the road, uh, all of the paper that we use printing copies and copies of the wetlands ordinance, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, and through all those things, by, by buying with other communities, I think it's very important to note that we, we save an awful lot by the volume, but even more than that, we save a tremendous amount of administrative time by, uh, the, by the COG agency running the bid process for us. And uh, I think that that benefit with, with the administrative time saved by the department heads and myself and, and others uh, can't be overestimated. Thank you. Councilor Masterson. Plus, Michael, we, we have had planning services too in the past. Um, that are, are very important. I, think. Um, I, w I was just going to ask, Mr. Chairman, if we had to come up with this $25,000, would we budget for it? Would that be part of next year's budget? Yeah, it, it's not really coming up with the money. It's just guaranteeing the credit, credit worthiness of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, it's, it's not foreseen, you know, unless COG is, is unable oh. to repay this note unless they fold it, you would have to, thought, that you would have to come up with the funds. If you did have to come up with the funds, it would simply be a charge against uh, your undesignated service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Council Cremer. Well, I, <coughs> I couldn't agree more with what uh, people have said, and I, with the Councilor Amaro and Cogshaw, uh, serve as a delegate uh, from Cape Elizabeth to the uh, COG General Assembly. I'm just a little confused about one issue, and that is, um, you know, if you take the 200,000 and divide by eight, you get 25,000 per town. Uh, it sounded like there was a unanimous vote of all 21 towns and municipalities, as well as the county government. If you divide 200,000 by 21, you get nine and a half thousand dollars liability. Uh, I, I like that idea. I mean, as a, you know, risk, uh, up front type of thing. Why could could someone clear up why it isn't that all 21 are sort of sharing the uh, potential risk? Well, actually, it, it's questionable for, even if eight communities sign on whether they are the only eight that are responsible. If if five should go. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and when the, this vote was taken, 
uh, it was not at that time envisioned that any communities would have to come in. Actually, according to our bylaws, the executive committee has the authority to borrow money on its own without going back to the community. However, with the banking situation in the state being as uh, tough as it is right now, uh, banks are requiring uh, extra precautions before they, they uh, give out loans. So actually, maybe only one community was on would require one or two or possibly three. But we thought rather than going out to 22 communities, many of whom have town meetings, <coughs> et cetera, and trying to schedule this, by the time we got the money, it would be hard to wait. Uh, and uh, the fact that we have so many outstanding bills now in fact, our bank is really critical, that we couldn't wait to go out to 22 communities uh, to get all of them. And uh, <coughs> I guess that's basically any other comment? I just, I just would also like to express, as past chairman of the Joint Services Commission of COG, my, my philosophical uh, bent towards this. We're all talking about working regionally together as a wave of the future. Certainly COG embodies that. Nonetheless, just as also a businessman, I, I guess that I am too, certain questions come to mind. And what, what is a new revenue flow, Jane, or what, what is kind of the proposed game plan in order that, w that you're not just going deeper in the hole, that you're going to that you see a way out of this, what, what, well, what basically is Well, the major thing is to cut down the overhead, and that's what we're doing by reducing the space that we're using. Uh, we've already have uh, two people in every office, but there was one in every office before, plus reducing the staff, uh, and also only taking, uh, not taking on any project until we get some upfront money from Todd's always been, well, it's a service organization, and they've always wanted to help every community or anybody that had it. Sure, we'll help you with this. And uh, sometime down the road get paid, and sometime down the road not get paid. Mm -hmm. So we're much becoming, I guess I would say, much more business mm -hmm. about projects that are in so that we won't get ourselves into that situation. Okay. Thank you. I have a couple of comments. Uh, <clears throat> so we're, we're signing up. For 25,000, but actually, I think if everybody else backed out, we'd be liable for the whole two. Is that a fair statement? No. no. Regardless of what happens, we're only liable for 25,000. Is that what you're saying? That's the way the motion is. Yeah, up to 25,000. Up to 25,000. My next question is, and it goes along with Council of Tories a little bit. Should we look for an increase in our fees here within the next year or so? For the COG budget? Yes. We haven't gotten into, we're just starting the budget process. I would say there will probably be some increase, but it would not be. <coughs> the, the proposed budget contains 10%. Uh, COG, from my discussions with a number of people, uh, they're, they're going to try to avoid an increase of that much. Uh, simply because they want to ensure that they keep the critical mass of the agency. They're very fearful that if they have as much as a 10% increase, that they might lose uh, a community or two. So the, uh, it would hurt them more than it would help them. To that size. These communities that don't belong to COG, they still get pretty much the benefit of COG, don't they? There's an indirect benefit that they receive. Okay. Anybody care to make a motion? Um, I move that we participate in um, signing a note to establish working capital for the Great Portland Council of Governments. Would you want to add to that not to exceed twenty-five thousand? Not to exceed twenty-five thousand dollars. I think that would be. Right. Do I hear a second to that? Second. Do you have a comment, sir? Yeah. Part of that should be either to authorize the manager or, or someone acting oh, yes. instead of the manager, act, or someone who's acting kind of manager to uh, authorize it, should the manager be out of town at the time. Want to add that to your motion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You want to add it to the second? Yes. <clears throat> All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Vote six to nothing.
Good luck, Jen. Best Thank of luck with this. Well, now I guess we can go back. We have given Councilor Janet McLaughlin one hour and ten minutes, I guess. I guess maybe we better go back to 147. And uh, what is your wishes? Wishes to move, wish to move on with it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, what we have here is a proposed, proposed revised agreement, land cableless land trust and defense of Jordan property. And uh, there's a few changes that was made and uh, some of the things that we mentioned in uh, some of our original meetings. And uh, we have a couple members of the land trust sitting out here, maybe three. And uh, maybe uh, they might have a few things they'd like to add to it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Nat Clifford, representing the uh, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. <clears throat> As you all probably recall, we uh, came before the council back in December and made a request that the council uh, authorize uh, uh, monies from the um, land acquisition fund towards the purchase of uh, a parcel of land on the shore of Great Pond. It was clearly understood at the time between the um, land trust and the council that one of the conditions of that grant was that we present the uh, council with an acceptable easement on the property to represent the town. Um, immediately after that appearance, um, late December, early January, uh, we submitted a uh, uh, revised easement agreement to the town that contained the two changes requested by the council. And uh, as I recall, one of the changes was to include the town in the um, <clears throat> group that would be needed to authorize any uh, changes in the option agreement. Uh, the only two previously mentioned were the owner and the land trust. Uh, that was done, and the second change was to have the baseline data, which would be prepared by the town on inspection, filed with the town clerk following approval by the land trust. Subsequently, uh, Mr. McGovern had Mr. Nadzo of Perkins Thompson uh, review, I'm sorry, of uh, Jensen, Baird, Gardner, and Henry review the option agreement, and uh, or the easement, I'm sorry, and um, he came up with a couple of changes that seemed to me to be largely uh, procedural and, and uh, simply straightening out some of the legal language. That we did, and uh, as I understand it from reading his most recent letter of February 12th, he feels that the uh, um, easement agreement is pretty much uh, uh, as it should be. Um, he does mention the responsibilities placed on the town in this agreement, and that uh, section has been consistent straight through. Uh, the precedent for this is the easement that the land trust uh, gave the town and the town accepted on the runaway farm property. This is the 19 acres over uh, beyond the town uh, farm. Um, so that his, Mr. Nanzo's comments uh, with respect to the town responsibility uh, uh, really, I think he's commenting on something that's been a thread all the way through and is in a previously accepted easement. Um, we have, uh, our board has, has ratified this uh, easement, so if the council accepts it, that uh, would uh, be, the, uh, be the end of the matter. I'd be happy to answer any, uh, any questions, and, and just briefly to repeat, we have uh, changed and did early on the two uh, items that the council requested back in December, and then since then on uh, town attorney review, we have I think uh, exceeded any uh, uh, wishes on there. Right. Thank you. Does anybody got a question to Mr. Clifford? Comment? Yes, Councilor Uh Not a question about this easement. How is the fundraising? We're doing very well. We're, uh, we've been working uh, primarily with, with selected donors, and, and uh, we'll go out for a townwide mailing. This is on the schedule that we originally uh, uh, figured, and I think I mentioned this back in December. Uh, we'll go out for townwide mailing probably within a week, and uh, that 
is an attempt not only to uh, raise additional funds for this project, but also to increase our membership. But uh, since I've been here in December, we're, we're moving exactly as we'd hoped. And uh, I see no reason that we can't uh, close. The closing date or the uh, uh, expiration of our option is June 26, hence the timing on the uh, on the moon. Council Kramer. <clears throat> Mr. Clifford, as you probably remember, I voted in the negative uh, on December uh, 11th with regard to your uh, proposal uh, only because I was unhappy with uh, the particular language that did not uh, state very clearly that the waivers and amendments uh, must be approved by the town also. Uh, given that change in paragraph 9, I have no particular problems with the language and uh, will be voting in the, the, in the affirmative this evening. Thank you. Anybody else? Council Mass? Well, I don't know if Matt can answer this question, but um, I'm wondering, um, in gathering the baseline data, who will be doing that? Our tree warden? Or? Primarily the Conservation Commission. That by the table chairman, William Wood. <laughs> the question was, who prepares the, the baseline data? I, I just said, Bill, that I was looking at him. I just indicated that I was looking at him. That was You're going to do it. We understand now. I didn't know you were chairman. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to, and I want to congratulate you as chairman of the Conservation Commission. I sit. <laughs> I've read in a memo here a while ago how many years you've been there. And that's unlucky, so you've got to continue along. <laughs> Council Cogshaw. I just wondered if um, Matt was going to give us a, a tour. Yeah, yes, I uh, committed to that back in December, and uh, mm -hmm. we didn't get any takers, but uh, well, we'll we're still available. Better, better <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have a suggestion. Why don't we put this this piece of property on our tour of facilities, which is, has that been scheduled? It's not yet been scheduled. But it could be scheduled. Mm -hmm. It could be scheduled. The end of it's the not week. so far in from no, as I recall, like, uh, Bowery uh, Beach Road that it would take two hours. Oh, heavens no, it wouldn't take that long. I think uh, you can get a pretty good idea of the flavor of the property and, and a good view of it by walking uh, from Bowery Beach Road in the area of the ice cream stand, mm -hmm. and probably uh, I would say 15 or 20 minutes would do it. We toured the uh, dam down at Willow Brook, I believe, either last spring or the one before, and, and it certainly wouldn't take any more time than that. That was fun. Anybody Maybe else? To walk in the woods. Mr. Chairman? Councilor Torrey. Oh, I would like to move that we accept the revised easement. Elizabeth Land Trust for the Francis Stewart property. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other comment? Uh, Council Amro. Including the language that this one is extended at the time of the if, if that's a necessary part of the motion. Yeah. I think it, it is. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's in the, it's in the original. It's in the original. I stayed okay. up last, last night really thinking about that, too, and I, sh you know, I should have said my initial gut reaction. I'm glad you pointed that out. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? To vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Council Tory. I would like to take up two items out of order, if we could, regarding appointing people to two committees because of vacancies that have arisen on two of our town boards. So I'd like to propose that we take up item 153 and 154 out of order. We'll hear a second? Second. All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, so vote. Shoot. Item 153 would be appointing uh, Mr. John S. S. Dexter 
to the Portland Headlight Keepers Quarters Building Committee to replace Penny Bartholomew, who is no longer able to serve on that committee. So moved. Second. These are all recommendations of the Appointments Committee, by the way. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hand. Thank you. Penny Bartholomew, good, good person there, too. Bachelman is Bachelman. proper. Bachelman is I'm proper sorry. Way. <laughs> good person, though. Uh, as I learned at the Appointments Committee. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about it. Yes, okay. I figured you did. <laughs> Item 154 is to uh, take up the appointment of Russell J. Erickson to fill the unexpired term of Allison Alma. Is it Reed, Michael? Yes. Uh, for the Community Services Advisory Board. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any other comment? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Next is citizen discussion. Items not on the agenda. <laughs> it's Carl. You might want to mention it. Oh, camera people. No. There's one. I got a couple of comments that I would like to make before we move to adjourn. Maybe we could turn the heat down a little bit next time. Would it be possible, you think? Not to sound like a broken record, but <laughs> in the budget there, there are some funds much needed adjustments to the heating system. Right, thank you. And I want you all to remember that uh, Thursday evening, March 12th, is the neighborhood meeting at the Thomas Memorial Library. And uh, I'm looking forward <coughs> to a big group to be there. And possibility I have a jail committee early in the evening. I might be a little late, but I think I can get out in time. The 15th today. Excuse me, Thursday the 15th. Councilor yes. comment? Before we adjourn, I wanted to also take up an issue. We, we've received a lot of correspondence from the town of Freeport regarding a meeting that they're going to be having in Augusta on the 14th of March. And really what it revolves around is the state, how much money the state is willing to share in its state revenue sharing with the municipalities and feeling because of the budget crunch in Augusta, some of the money that had been earmarked for municipalities has, has been cut as part of the, the necessary cuts in order for them to, to make their budget whole. And I wanted to get some background information while we were still in formal session and on television from the manager regarding what impact this has for the town of Cape Elizabeth, both on the municipal side and on the school side. Could you give us a brief synopsis of how it's impacting us? It's obviously steamed our, our, our brethren in Freeport to the point where they are in complete unanimity, including with the town manager and their efforts to lobby strongly in Augusta to have that money reinstated. And given all the verbiage we've had for property taxes over the last year, I feel it would be appropriate at this time to, to bring us up to date on what, what, has the impact been as severe here? And if, if not, why not, et cetera? There are, there are essentially four different major areas where the state provides different means of property tax relief. Uh, the first is the circuit breaker uh, provisions uh, that help out people who are in need and then the elderly. Uh, that is still, as far as I know, fully funded and is in no danger of uh, any reductions at this point uh, below the, the levels that have now historically been indicated uh, are needed. Uh, the second program is uh, the homestead exemption uh, which was approved uh, in the last legislative session as, as an initiative of, of the governor and uh, the legislature. Uh, that particular program uh, has, is not going to be funded uh, this year. I spoke to uh, uh, the House Republican leader, Mary Webster, uh, this, this afternoon, uh, who's very disappointed that it is not going to be funded. And there's also a move afoot, uh, she indicated by uh, members of the legislature uh, to uh, eliminate even the enabling legislation for the homestead exemption. In other words, a move afoot so that even if there were funds available, uh, the enabling legislation would not be in place. Uh, the third program, major program, is state revenue sharing. Uh, the governor's uh, initial estimates had, had indicated that we would get, I think, over two years, about 65,000 more than we're getting now. Uh, those uh, estimates have been revised and they essentially show, at least the governor's estimates show, that during the next year we will get 15 more thousand dollars than we got this year. Uh, I uh, had my doubts uh, with the governor's estimates and 
and I follow the advice of the Maine Municipal Association in the budget, which was essentially to use 10% less uh, than the uh, than the governor's estimate. So essentially what that comes out, it came out to about $370,000, which is the same amount as in the current year. Uh, the other major, uh, in the most major uh, program of property tax relief is uh, education, the various formulas for school educational funding. Uh, those are still being debated by the legislature. Uh, the, to my knowledge, there's been no, no formal decision on it. Uh, Cape Elizabeth does stand to lose some funds. Uh, the recommendation of uh, Commissioner Byther and the governor uh, was that it be an across-the-board cut in terms of, like, if you were to get $1 million every community, you'd get a 10% cut. If you got $3 million, you'd get a 10% cut. Some of the... Excuse me. Four. Well, I was using hypothetical. Four percent. A lot of the, the uh, high subsidy communities are very upset with that provision. And they think that uh, it ought to be done more on a dollar basis than on a percentage basis. So those communities that get a lesser amount, such as Cape Elizabeth, would get hotter hit. Uh, that is still, is still being debated. It does look as though Cape Elizabeth will lose some funds. And I believe... Uh, in the school budget uh, will we'll indicate that. Uh, the 4% decrease in the subsidy that we otherwise would have gotten, as well as, uh, I believe it's still out, the special program that was enacted last year for the so-called wealthier communities uh, that we got $77,000 from uh, last year. I believe uh, those, the funds for that particular program are not included in the governor's budget. So we would get hit on the school side uh, approximately the $77,000 plus the, the 4% uh, within the educational uh, subject of the, of the dollar amount, but not 4% of the, uh, like, you know, if we're getting 21%, we wouldn't get down to 17, 4% of the total. That's essentially where it appears to stand at this point. What, what do you estimate that the educational side could be then based on the best available information? You, you mentioned the 77 plus 4% cut. Well, if we're getting about 1.5 million in subsidy, is that right? be 4% of 1.5 million, which would be uh, 60,000, maybe? That's off the top of my head. Plus the other money. Plus right. the 75,000. So, so it means it's, it's, it's significant monies we're talking about. Yes, it is. And just one more clarification on why we didn't get hit as hard on the, on the state revenue sharing side. Could you, go, could you go through that one more time? Just to, Was I, it because you, you estimated so conservatively that the hit that we took didn't, didn't hit us as hard? I don't think, to, to be honest with you, I don't think any community is getting hit hard from what they're getting now from what you read in the newspaper. Uh, what, what they're getting hit from is that the governor came out with these very, very high revenue assumptions which just aren't going to materialize. Uh, people may have based long-term projections on that, but I don't know of any community that had actually put together a budget based on the governor's earlier estimates. Uh, so, you know, what the numbers really show at this point is everyone's going to get, really not get a cut in that program. They're, they're going to... Uh, be fairly even or get a slight increase. In fact, in the education fund statewide, <coughs> the state will be getting 10% more this year from the state than we got last year. It's just that people were expecting they would get 14%. So it's not a cut, it's an actual increase. But some communities will be cut, like Cape Elizabeth will be cut, right? Only if your property valuation uh, increased <coughs> higher than the state at, at the same time. Statewide property values, according to the, the MMA Townsman article, went up, I think, 11 or 12 percent. Cape Elizabeth's state valuation went up close to 30 percent last year. So, so you know, even, even if the governor had his extra, or the state had their extra, uh, whatever the amount originally was, uh, we still would have sustained a cut. And, you know, in the last few years, the, the governor's come up with uh, close to $100 million more in, in educational funding. And uh, not much of it's found its way to Cape Elizabeth because of uh, where we stand with property valuation. But there are other regions of the state who have had a bonanza. What, uh, what impact would it have, this is my last question, on fiscal 90 versus fiscal 91 here? Is there any impact on this, th what's happening in Augusta to us in this year's budget? And then tell me what the impact would be for next year's budget. There is no impact on what is happening in Augusta on this year's budget. The only impact we are having um, is that our revenues from state, our percentage of state revenue sharing 
because of the economy having slowed, there is as much money in the pool, and we're not getting as much as we otherwise would have. But it, it still looks like we'll make budget because of the conservative investment. And the second half of your question about next year? Mm -hmm. what, what is it doing in terms of your budget projections for next year? All on, in the, on the municipal side, I'm projecting flat revenues from the state, no increases. As a percentage of our budget, uh, because we, it's proposed to spend more, the state will be will be uh, funding a proportionally lower share of our municipal budget than they are this year, but it will be with the same dollars. It will be a slight shift uh, to the property tax. Well, I, I just wanted to, to raise this, and I'd like to get some feedback from my fellow councils regarding what they thought of the gist of the Freeport resolution, because it's quite, quite clear and quite strong, and I think in sync with what we've been saying right along, which is that how much more of a burden can be put on the property tax and we all know politics and where, where there is heat from certain quarters, there is suddenly action. And I do commend Freeport for their realizing that they can m work together as a body to go up to Augusta and, and, and raise some hell about this issue. And I really think that's a, an outstanding way that they've pulled together. Now, whether we want to do a similar thing or we feel strongly about it, I just wanted to, to get the reaction of what my fellow counselors thought about all this Freeport communication we've made. Does anybody else got a comment? Nobody else got a comment? No one else has a comment regarding this whole issue. Of pro is property tax now just an issue that's going away? Is that it? Or we feel we have no leverage in Augusta? Or Well, I think, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. When, when the money's aren't there, the, the only option is to go up and say, okay, well, we want to support an increase in sales tax or the income tax or some other tax because the money's aren't there. So I think I must be prepared as a group to say, how, where those are going to come from. You can follow the stream all you want, but I think that's where we're going to uh, produce some new revenue. You're invited to go with Freeport or by yourself on the 14th, leaving 1130 if I remember correctly. Well, that's, that's what I'm you know, going to be doing. I just wanted to let the citizens be aware of this whole picture and what's happening with another council. I, I personally can't make it because the some engagements, unfortunately, but I, I'm, I'm supportive of what they're doing. We'll try to fit in somehow with it. But I agree with what Jane's saying, and I do think if that's what's needed, fine. But there's too much of a burden that's coming to the property tax. So we we should go up there and be heard as municipal officials. I, I I really do think, though, to be realistic, that this being an election year, you're not going to get anyone willing up in Augusta willing to raise any kind of tax. I think that the town manager and I already went to Augusta the day the $210 million shortfall, so to speak, was announced, and, and we've let them hear us at the uh, Legislative Municipal Summit. Is there anybody else been on? Do you feel that we ought to take any action as far as a report resolution? Uh, I do. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 not going to. I didn't propose it as an agenda item, and I may be I may for April, but I just feel that if we feel strongly, and I know how we've all talked about this in depth about property taxes over the last year, and it's happening in all neighboring states where cities and towns are being cut, and they're, they're really forming strong lobbying efforts. The Massachusetts lobbying effort on Dukakis is intense. Why shouldn't our lobbying effort on McCurry be as intense? Even if we even if we fail, at least we've showed the taxpayers that we care enough to get up there and represent them. So I will be looking into this further. Thank you. No, I, I am inclined to agree with you that uh, something's got to be done, but I think that you've got to go, when you go, you want to go in the alternative that you recommend that, uh, as Council Amwell says, uh, we endorse a sales tax or we endorse something, not just go up there and call and scream about it, but I don't think you'll get it this year. Has anybody else got anything that they would like to uh, add before we adjourn? We have Councilor McLaughlin here at the present time, and time to close the meeting. Maybe she would like to make a motion to adjourn. Do you have anything you'd like to say? No, thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Good night. Thank you all for watching, listening.